I mean, if anyone thinks they're inherently bad for any reason, uh, or they, they think that this person is trying to teach them that they're inherently bad, they're going to reject it. They're going to reject it. And the right is really good at weaponizing all this. The, the right is really good at saying, you know, the left, this is what they're doing. And the libs too, the libs and the left, they hate white people. They hate men. They hate them. Absolutely they blame white people for everything. Those lefties, they do it. Yep, they try to say that racist white babies are being taught in schools, CRT, fucking all this nonsense, but it's, it's, it's real, you know? They're trying to destroy men. You know, I find it absolutely fascinating that self-proclaimed Christian nationalists like Marjorie Taylor Greene okay, we'll go out of their way to prove how loyal they are to the American fascist movement. She'll even support bans on women's reproductive rights that could directly affect her one day. But still, there are some individuals within her movement that will never accept her. Why? Well, let's hear from Jonathan Shelley of Steadfast Baptist Church on why he, even though he... By the way, can I say something? We on the left will accept you for anything that you were born as. Does not matter to us. We will accept you, okay? Doesn't matter if you happen to be black or white. Doesn't matter if you happen to be straight or gay. We're going to love you. The things that we don't tolerate are the fascists, aka the intolerables, people who want to hate and oppress other people. Those are the ones that we don't tolerate. But there's good news on that front. You can also change. That is not something that is intrinsic or inherent to you. Doesn't matter again if you're black or white, indigenous, Asian, doesn't matter about any of that, you can change. You have the ability to do so, at which point there can be a whole bunch of stuff you need to learn along the way, and then you can be on your way to making the world better, make it a better place. You see, those are the baddies. That's the, the, They're the bad people. They're, they're the ones, and I'm not trying to say this as like the world is just good and evil, and of course you would turn your enemies into something like that, but I'm saying that their primary goal is to oppress people. It's to oppress people, and that's going to make those people's lives much harder, and it sucks, because while they're doing that, the oppression that comes out of capitalism just kind of goes un unobstructed. We just all sit back as we all get fucked by capitalism, you know? That's just, just the way. He agrees politically with Marjorie Taylor Greene, would never accept someone like her, would never vote for someone like her to be in a position of leadership. Why are we letting women teach us? Why are we letting women lead us? You know, the Republican Party seems doomed to me, because while we're kicking on the Democrats, let's kick on the Republicans for a minute. Most my dudes, I love you. Dudes rock. All right. I'm just going to say this. So let me get that out of the way. All right. Now that we've done that one part, I got to say, um, men have been running the show for a long time and they've done a lot of super, super fucked up stuff, you know, really fucked up, like fuck, fucking fucked up stuff, genocides, nuclear bombs being dropped, shit like that. Uh, and they've been in control uh, that entire time. So uh, the idea now where it's like we are going to lose society if women start to do things or start to have input or start to uh, be prominent or start to have positions of power or suddenly maybe we start to, you know, dismantle this whole patriarchy thing because it fucking sucks for dudes. Patriarchy is shitty for men, really shitty for men, shitty for men, shitty for women, just shitty for everybody. It's just shitty. It's shitty for all genders, actually. Non-binary people, trans men, trans women, doesn't matter. It's shitty for everybody. It's just, it's a really shitty structure and system to want to uphold and try to live by. Uh, so we should do away with it, probably. And and we should, uh, you know, get more women into political positions of power. Absolutely. Yeah, I would I would say yes. The recent candidates are women. Right. And I'm thinking like, okay, Joe Biden bad. A woman politician replacing him, not better. You know, you kind of like people are thinking like, I hope Joe Biden dies. And it's like Kamala. <laughs> you don't even know what the next Pharaoh's like. <laughs> uh, I also despise Kamala Harris, probably for different reasons. Yeah, very specifically different reasons. Uh, but uh, just the idea of the fact that she's a woman being a disqualifying agent. That's, that's a really fucked up way to go about this. This Pharaoh could be worse. But I'm telling you something. I would never vote for a woman politician. I will not support a woman politician. Oh, Major uh, Taylor Green or whatever. Marjorie Taylor Green. She's a conservative. She's on Infowars. She's a woman. Yeah. She's not going to fix this country. <laughs> who was who ruined this country? <laughs> like by your own logic, by your logic, America destroyed. Majority of politicians throughout American history up until this point have been dominated by men. There's more parody now than there ever was. That's a good thing, by the way. But uh, yeah, it's been men running and fucking the show up, it would seem. So the solution is more men. <laughs> How are you this, like for people who obsess over gender the way that fucking the right does, 
I'm so scared of it. Maybe that's why they're so obsessed. Like, the very concept of it. It's like, there are only two genders. Anything else really fucking weirds me out and I can't understand it. It's too many concepts. And you're like, um, okay, well, but there's more than just two genders. And the idea of trying to withhold, you know, make people fall into rigid gender roles against their will seems kind of weird and oppressive. And I don't know why we do it. And also, all you really have to do, because this doesn't affect you, you seem to be a cis man and comfortable with your position. Uh, this isn't something that's going to change your life. You may, at one point in your life, have to use a different pronoun. And I'm going to really scare you, because this this one is the reality of the situation. You already use different names. Like when you meet someone, when you when you say hello and you shake their hand, and they're like, hi, my name's Michael. Are you like, ah, I refuse. I refuse. No, that's oppression. I, I will not learn your name. No, you will be uh, Gork. Yes, Gork. That, that's what I That's what I say. It's my name for you. You don't get to choose. My name is Michael, though. It'd be weird to be called Gork. I wouldn't recognize it if you called me Gork in the street. If you, like if I was walking down the road and you said, hi, Gork, I probably wouldn't be like, hi. Uh, I, unless you started berating and yelling at me, then I'd be like, oh, there's that asshole who thinks I'm called Gork, but that's not my name. So, yeah, that's all there really is to it. Yeah, or when people change their names because of marriage, because that's just expected of everybody, right? Everyone just has to take the man's name. Let's just do this more fun, rigid gender roles. Yeah. Did you take your wife's name? No. Heavens heavens forbid. That would emasculate me. Yeah, no, I can't have that. Next, you'll want to start putting a cut cage on me. Yeah, I've seen what happens. I've seen what happens to other men. You know, I it's own like her. This, uh, I think that in Arizona, it's like Carrie Lake or something like that is running for governor. And she's like, she's going to stand strong. And it's like, no, she's a woman. I don't care that she has a short haircut. You know, and it's sick how many men today let women just run our country because they're too cowardly to stand up to silly women. Men are too afraid you to stand silly up to AOC. Women. Men are too afraid to stand up to Hillary Clinton. Men are too What the fuck are you talking about? She gets straight up sexually harassed on the street. On the street. And it's a prank, bro. It's it's funny. It's for the lulz. You probably watched the video and jerked off and then shared it with all your friends. Like, she gets openly harassed. Like, it's it's not even a, like, well, it would be terrible if this happens. No, it, it just happens. She gets sexually harassed on the street. Yeah, so uh, I think people are definitely speaking up and speaking out about her. Fucking Republicans, people on the far right, they want her dead. They, they think she is some, like, socialist infiltrator destroying the country and confusing their dicks. Like, there's no there's no question about that. Like, if you think women are somehow controlling society now and they suddenly feel safe and secure uh, out in the open because, oh, we've gone too far with the Me Too stuff. Oh, what did, you know, cat calling is gone. Everything is safe now. Women don't get followed home by complete strangers. Women don't get cars, like, pulling up to them, asking for them to jump in the car, baby, and stuff like that. That doesn't happen anymore. You know, assault and rape is gone. It's, it's all, everything is perfect afraid to stand up to nasty Pelosi, but I'm telling you, you know what? We need men to stand up and say, get back in the kitchen and make me a sandwich. Oy. And you know what? Some pastors my wife. Their wives to do that. Wow. Now, when the camera panned and showed the audience chuckling at his stupidity there, it really disturbed me to see little boys in that crowd because this is being embedded in their heads at such a young age that I worry that they're going to grow up and espouse these same horrific, draconian, antiquated views. But I hope that, you know, when they are old enough, they go to college, they hear from more open-minded people, they do research and realize that all of these lies, all of this dumb fuckery that's being fed to them, that was fed to them at a young age when they're older, was all wrong. I mean, certainly I left the evangelical Christian cult when I was introduced to different opinions. So I hope that the same will be true <laughs> for them. And you know, one thing that also bothered me was the women in the different audience opinions. that just nodded along. I mean, stand up for yourselves. He's telling you that you are meaningless. Your lives aren't as valuable as the lives of men. Your voice isn't as valuable as the lives a rare moment, I don't know if I 100% agree, not because, like, it's not as if they don't bear any blame if they're trying to impose policies that are going to obviously hurt women, ultimately. But there's a lot of things I don't know about the scenario. Do their husbands beat them? Are they afraid of them? Are they uh, in some kind of situation? Blah, blah, blah. Do they come to these same conclusions? Uh, did this all come from a strict biblical background? Maybe. Not to say, though, that if a woman was, like, openly saying the exact same things as him i would disagree in the exact same way right it doesn't matter that it was coming from a woman's opinion lives of but men it... and your life your mere existence is simply to serve men get in the kitchen and make us a sandwich that's what he literally said and they're just sitting there nodding along how can you support someone 
who thinks that you are inferior to them. I don't get how every woman wouldn't just get up and leave, but I mean, this shows the power of it's really brainwashing. Complicated. It's just truly horrific. Now, you saw what he said about Marjorie Taylor Greene and Carrie Lake, but Marjorie would say, oh, well, this individual... Misogyny knows no gender. Yeah, it's true. Hey, this is actually a good time for a little PSA that I've been wanting to talk about for a while. Here, let me take off uh, this picture for two seconds and let me take off another one. Uh, and this is going to be uh, just a little quick speech about this topic specifically. I think that there is, broadly speaking, uh, a general lack of compassion and or discussions surrounding men and men's health on the left. We brought this up before that the manosphere gets to dominate uh, by right wingers, libertarians, uh, centrists, but mostly right wingers with the Fresh and Fit podcasts and the fucking the Andrew Tates prior to his cancellation, all that kind of stuff. But just canceling Andrew Tate, for example, uh, either removing some of his platforms or removing his Discord, or removing how far his reach can be, that does nothing to solve the problem of a very huge amount of men who feel dramatically lost right now and look for answers online. And when there's no alternative to those answers, when there's no healthy alternative to those answers, they find this terrible racist misogynistic shit that turns them into women hating racists kind of shit if you go too far down this pipeline. And it's really, really sad. I don't think the left should be scared about talking about those issues. I don't think the left should be talking about issues, uh, should be scared about talking about issues just out of fear of it suddenly validating that things like uh, patriarchy or systemic racism don't exist. They absolutely do. But guess what? There is a very large, and let's be honest here, a very large white male population who go on the internet and they are suffering and sometimes, in some cases, under capitalism, under, uh, you know, economic inequality, just like everybody else, having just as many problems, broken homes, parents who are drug addicted, uh, parents who have to work two jobs so they never see them, living in just impoverished communities that, you know, poverty begets poverty, huge rates of addiction, all these kind of problems. There is a very, very large amount of those people, especially in America, and when the alternative to talking about them or even empathizing with them is only seen as, well, the left and the people on the left, all I ever see is, oh, you're a fucking white supremacist, oh, you're a sexist, oh, you're a misogynist, if you don't understand these 20 rules and here's how it goes, okay, you have to check your privilege, you have to understand all these like concepts, you may not have ever thought about race or racial theory or anything like that, but you're a fucking scumbag if you don't, blah, blah, blah. And meanwhile, the other side is like, hey, bruv, oi, I got solutions for you. I'm going to get you to be rich. I'm going to get you to fucking get all the women that you want because I know you're lonely. You're just so very lonely. You're so lonely that you're willing to give me money. You're willing to suddenly pay me a whole bunch of your cash to be able to, you know, sell you some ideas that are going to turn you into something that probably women will never want to talk to. I'll be frank. Like Andrew Tate and his entire sales pitch, that will turn you into an absolute monster that women will want nothing to do with. Why would a woman want to be around... Like that clip we just saw, people who genuinely think that they're inferior, that they're walking sex vessels that are denying them sex, all that shit. Like, oh yeah, that sounds like a fucking awesome relationship. Oh, that sounds like an awesome opportunity. Oh yeah, can I can I get with this uh, woman-hating man who thinks that uh, I should be subservient to him and that I need to treat him uh, like my master and that uh, I cannot go on Instagram or uh, I can't have friends because if I do, uh, that it's just because, uh, you know, he's not... Uh, sigma enough and so i'm cucking him like no that's that's gonna turn you into an absolute terrible person to be with and no one will want to be with you and you'll be more lonely and and unfortunately broke if you if you turn to andrew tate so i don't think and i say this also to fellow lefties there's anything wrong with saying that there are issues that are affecting men and by the way these are the people who turn into the alt-right typically it's young white men the young white men are the ones who turn into the fucking uh, militias, who turn into the Boogaloo Boys, the Proud Boys, the Three Percenters, all these far-right militias, and then commit acts of violence, and commit acts of racial violence, by the way, shooting up uh, black people in Buffalo. Th these are the people who, if it gets to its furthest terrible point, and it can, and if it does, that's who they become. So there's no reason to make that entire group just feel ostracized uh, in your messaging even if you're trying to teach things like intersectional feminism, which is a concept that might take time, is a concept that like people have trouble 
wrapping their heads around some of these things. And if it just comes across and immediately is is going to be something like, if you don't believe this or you don't believe that you're white privilege and you don't acknowledge it, if you don't s explain your white privilege every time you go into a room, if you don't apologize and get on your knees for, for the, the sins of your forefathers, if you don't do that all the time, you're a fucking, you're, you're, you're a coward, you know, blah, 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 and all this kind of stuff. Like, it's, it's going to seem and or the other direction of that is like the sexism stuff like all men are fucking every single man is a scumbag every single man just wants to fuck every single man uh, is a cheater and a liar every single man is this and that uh, and then if they see that on the other end well why would i want to learn anything from this side of the internet the other side is right away trying to validate some fears that i have why am i so sad all the time why do i have anxiety why, why don't I see my, like, why don't I have friends? Why don't I see my parents ever? Uh, you know, why does, why do other people have so many things that I don't? Why do other kids at school have nicer clothes than me? Why, why are they, why do some of the boys actually get with girls and why don't girls like me? All of these kind of things, things that they can't talk to anyone about. They go on the internet and then boom, up pops Andrew fucking Tate. Well, not anymore, but up popped Andrew Tate, up pops the Fresh and Fit podcast, whatever it is. And then immediately it's someone who's going to validate their feelings and say, hey, by the way, you, you feel this way because of women. It's women who are doing this to you. You don't know, you didn't know this, but it's women. They're all liars and deceivers and they're all cheaters and they try to manipulate you with their pussies. They think they have magical fucking pussies, bro. Those are magical fucking pussies, bro. They got nothing, bro. Not on us. They're going to be subservient to us, bro. That's right. That's right. Come join the Discord. We got a community. We got a great community of bros helping bros out. Yeah, we're going to fucking, we're going to have every answer to everything you got. We got another community, by the way. This one costs a little bit more money, but this one's going to make you successful, bro, because then you're going to get rich. You're going to have bank. You're going to get all these fucking huge ass titty women all of them you're gonna control them all they'll all be subservient to you everyone's gonna think you're so cool because look at me look at my bugatti look at my life look how i live all right look out look at the women look at all the women i fuck look at all this look at all this pussy i get all this pussy bro you want all this you're gonna get this then you start now join us and then boom Join that community, start going down that rabbit hole, start overlapping with other communities, by the way, because surprise, surprise, the misogynists seem to have a lot of overlap with the fucking racists and the white supremacists. And so that all of a sudden is like, you know what, bro? Yeah, not only is it women, but I don't know if you know this. Different races have different IQs, bro. Yeah. Did you know that? Did you know the black black IQs are, are lower than white IQs, bro? Yeah, I, apparently the Stefan Molyneux guy and, and Dave Rubin said it's because, like, they have smaller brains, bro. Did you know that? Did you know that? I, I learned all this stuff, bro. Like, you should you should really check out this other this other YouTuber. He's pretty good. Yeah, Sticks and Hammer, 666. Talks about a lot of serious shit, bro. Yeah, I mean, like, watch him. Watch some others. There's, I mean, you could get some entry points. Maybe you get that Crowder in there, Tim Pool, stuff like that. They'll teach you a lot about, about race theory. Like, I didn't know this, but, like, like black people they're in prison way more than white people like for violent crimes why is that bro have you ever asked that you know all of a sudden boom we've got overlap we've got someone who is young impressionable sad looking for answers looking for community and we have a person ready to overlap with racist ideology great replacement shit conspiracy theories fucking all of that uh, and, and thinking i'm still i'm still part of a community uh you know maybe this community uh maybe i have to keep my community safe fuck maybe i have to buy a gun maybe i have to train a little bit maybe i have to get ready i mean fuck what what if black people or or brown people or muslims what, what if they try to attack me uh ben shapiro's got me really worried about being attacked by muslims what about trans people i didn't even know this i didn't know much about trans people but now i'm learning all of this from you my fucking sources these are the new sources well now i'm learning all these horrifying things about trans people apparently they're trying to like uh have sex with kids they're all pedophiles and groomers and, and all this kind of shit oh no uh, I, I'm, I'm really scared of trans people now trans people are evil trans people are pedophiles and now i i also hate women women are evil and they're trying to manipulate me and i also hate i also hate black people because of affirmative action and and everyone calls me racist just because i'm white I, I i don't want to be called racist it's, it's shitty it's bad feeling and and the and the racist towards white people that really it's white people who are who are the target of all this what do i do what do i do with all this knowledge and information and anger and fucking testosterone because maybe i'm not allowed to jerk off because i've reached certain levels of the rabbit hole that don't even allow for that you're fucking proud boy at that point it's like you can't even jerk off you can't, you can't so there's no release yeah it's just the fucking add unbelievable uh frustration and horniness into all of this and sexual repression 
Because sexual repression is eventually down the fucking, it's down the ladder. And sex, like the sexlessness of younger generations is also, sorry, going up. Like it's, it's a very sexless generation that is happening. Uh, and combine all this into what do we have now? You know, this is like a fucking, you have now made uh, a white nationalist terrorist. Like this is the recipe. This, this is how you create them. There, there you have it. So, in summary, I think it is still very important to talk about issues that concern men, specifically about healthy issues on how to help men, how to be good to men, uh, in, in order to help them, uh, because it's not just women who are having a hard time, under patriarchy, because they are oppressed in other ways, and they are oppressed, and that should be acknowledged, and that can't be taught to anybody if people think that they're inherently bad just for being black, or, or sorry, just for being uh, a man. Or just for being a white dude, if they think that. If they think that they're somehow inherently bad. I mean, if anyone thinks they're inherently bad for any reason, uh, or they, they think that this person is trying to teach them that they're inherently bad, they're going to reject it. They're going to reject it. And the right is really good at weaponizing all this. The, the right is really good at saying, you know the left, this is what they're doing, and the libs too. The libs and the left, they hate white people. They hate men. They hate them. Absolutely they blame white people for everything. Those lefties, they do it. Yep, they try to say that racist white babies are being taught in schools, CRT, fucking all this nonsense, but it's, it's, it's real, you know? They're trying to destroy men. Anyways, you got someone like that in your life? You got someone like that you're worried about? Send them to reddit slash r slash men's lib. It is a intersectional space for men to open up, talk about their feelings, ask hard questions, get answers. If they're in good faith, they are met always with good faith. And it's also super, super wholesome. Super wholesome, amazingly wholesome space. You will see minds transform in real time when you go down some of the, the threads. I kid you not. It can actually be quite uplifting to scroll through a long thread and see the process of someone like breaking this stuff down in their head for the first time, learning about intersectional feminism, but also doing it from a positive and healthy male perspective with other dudes. Like it is, it, it should be called Dudes Rock, uh, the subreddit. I, I would highly recommend it to anyone who has a, a young man in their lives who's in trouble going down a rabbit hole has no sense of community, stuff like that. Uh, that's like, it's not a fix, but it's an easy, send, send them there, you know? Do you enjoy the SERPs, but prefer not to have to use your eyeballs? Many are saying this. Well, we've got the solution for you. It's the Surf Times in podcast form, available on most major podcasting networks now. If you enjoy it, please consider leaving a good review and feedback because it really helps the show out, apparently, and it's free, just like the podcast. To our gods, Xander Corvus and Peyton L. Juice. We shall spend many a generations building mighty cathedrals in your honor. To our monarch, Tom Spiker, we are but your oafish jesters, here to offer you a laugh at any opportunity. To our brave knights of the round table, Rachel K., Izzy Solidarity, Victoria Bell, Sebastian Demel, Mark Harmon, Benji Arney, Scary Earth Human, Tony, DM Rivera, Resident Scarecrow, Sir Nickus, Cheryl Alvarez, Ruby Kelly, Brandon, Words Greenwood, Everything Important, Hegbird Celine, Matthew Scarborough, Stellar Vision, Ariane McCarthy, Doug Cady, Daniel Sutton, Jenna Tao, Dark Puppy, Quiet185, Anna Loves Riley, Omni, Riley and Anna, Poodlehawk, Multimondi, Trevbot EXE, Brian Ephraim, Anthropofojak, Catherine, Ramon Acosta, Incosin, Ralph Parler, Violent Orchard, Political Puppy, La Media Panza, Todd Buckingham, and Todd Lajeunesse. We salute our valiant heroes off to fight injustice everywhere.